Welcome to Faith and Science Programs. Be blessed as you watch. Dear friends, welcome to our program Faith and Science. If this is the first time to watch this program, I uh, welcome you in the name of Jesus. We've been on uh, this program with the Lighthouse Television for the last three years and we thank God that he has, bring, has brought us up to now and uh, things are very well. Thank you for your support and thank you for those uh, comments that you do normally send to us and those thoughts of encouragement. Uh, today, um, before I start, uh, the faith uh, part, normally we divide our program into two parts whenever it's possible. The faith part first and uh, the science part. So today, before I start, I would like to have a word of prayer. Father Lord Jesus, we thank you that this is the day that you have made. I thank you for my viewers, our viewers, our listeners on this program that may bless them that their lives will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, Amen. Today, uh, my wife is not here, um, but she'll be here next week to continue our series of uh, which master are you serving? But today I just wanted to read a scripture in Isaiah chapter 64. And as we normally remind you, that you and me, everybody, all human beings, every, every creation in this world was made by God. Especially human beings that the Bible says that uh, I am created in a fearful and a marvelous way. You are not here alone just by accident. You are not on this planet Earth but just by accident. Just to spend 70 years, 80 years, 100 years, if you can get there, 120, and then you disappear. We are just not created that way. From the very beginning, God said, I'll make man in my own image, and I want this man to be a, a, a present thing in his sight and to serve him. But when man sinned, God put up a plan to rescue man. And we know that 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to do this, exactly to do this. Uh, my thoughts today are goes to Isaiah 64, the whole chapter. I'm going to read it and you can see, read with me on the screen. Or that you would rent heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you, as when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil. Come down to, to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did all some things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since the ancient of times no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any good God besides you, who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You came to help those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continue to sin against them, you are angry, how then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean. All our righteousness acts are like filthy rags. We shall shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and made us waste away because of our sins. Yet, O oh Lord, you are the Father. You are our Father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the works of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure. O oh Lord, do not remember our sins forever. All look upon us, we pray, for we are all your people. Your, sacrifice, your sacred cities have become a desert. Even Zion is a desert. Jerusalem is a desolation. Our holy and glorious temple, where our fathers praised you, has been burned with fire. All that we treasured lies and ruins. After all this, O oh Lord, would you hold yourself back? 
Will you keep silent and punish us beyond measure? Dear friends, I'm just reading this scripture from Psalm Isaiah 64. This is the prophet Isaiah who lived nearly seven or to eight hundred years before Jesus was born. This man forced you, uh, he saw things that were to happen, even predicted the birth of Jesus. And his words are wonderful. When I read the book of Isaiah, I'm amazed how God speaks through human beings. Uh, the words, things that have never happened, and things that are going to happen. This was a wonderful prophecy that Isaiah wrote. Some of us have been seeing a lot of things happening um, two weeks ago in the North uh, Europe when we, there was a, a volcanic uh, activity, one of those uh, volcanoes erupted and uh, for nearly uh, seven to ten days aeroplanes stopped because they couldn't fly. There was fire coming out of the mountain uh, and everything came to, to, to stop standard still. So this is the power of God. And this Isaiah he saw in his vision uh, that God you rent heavens you cause earthquakes you cause um, volcanic activities and all the things for us human beings to be able to see that there is a God who created all the things. And he says, I wish you could rent heavens, you could open heavens so that we could, men could see you. And these things every day, God's, uh, the, the Bible says, the, the universe, the heavens declare the glory of God. The mountains that we saw, we see, the volcanic activities that we see, they declare the glory of God. And yet, most of us, we just walk away as if nothing is happening. God, I want to tell you, my friend, that God created you and He created me. He controls the whole universe. This universe, this earth that we are living on, it's not yours, it's not mine. The Bible says that this earth belongs to God in Psalm 24. Belongs to God. And when God did wonderful things in front of the children of Israel many years ago, uh, many of them, they did not even understand. He performed miracles. And God has been performing wonderful things for you and your family. But I want to ask you, can you pause and wonder who is doing all these things? The Bible says here that God, He can tremble. He causes mountains to tremble. He makes things that never existed to exist. And in verse 5 he says, You came to help those who gladly do right, who remembers your ways. God always will come down to remember those people who call upon his name. When you call upon God's name, he will remember you and he will come and answer your prayers. But when we continue to sin against God, he was angry as he was angry with the children of Israel. And God is angry today with those people to us who don't do his things according to his ways. And Isaiah says, who can be saved? Who can be saved? Because the Bible says here, I continue to say, all our righteousness, if you have righteousness, are like filthy rags. Your righteousness, my righteousness before God are like filthy rags. In other words, you don't have any righteousness before God, any righteous, that righteousness that God can say, well done. No. No one is righteous. We know that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, He came down 2,000 years ago. He's the only righteous. And you can become righteous before God through Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, I am the life, and I am the truth. No man comes to the Father except through him, through me, this Jesus said. So Isaiah continues and he says, No one calls on your name. All strives to lay hold of you. All of us, no one, no one, no one, the Bible says, no one strives after your name. 
as my prayer my brother my sister who's listening that you strive not in your own strength but you call upon the name of Jesus and say Lord Jesus I want to have fellowship with you you reach forward you reach forward and say Lord I want you to come in my heart and be my friend be my savior your righteousness your good works will never save you you might be giving money to the poor you might be building churches you might be uh, you may say to yourself I don't I don't drink I don't cheat I don't do fornication I don't do adultery and all the things but you know all the Bible says all your righteousness all my righteousness all your righteousness goods they are like filthy rags before God in other words God will not look even there to see your works and the Bible tells us about the good news that Jesus came down 2,000 years ago to save you and save me in fact Isaiah chapter 53 I'll just read the first one or two verses who has believed our message and who has the arm of the Lord been revealed he grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of the dry ground and he's talking about Jesus that he came he became man and in the form of man he died on the cross and he took your sins and he my sins so that you may be saved now um, our science program we are going to be spending at least about 20 minutes more than 20 minutes from now until the end of the year to take spend a little bit more time to talk about some uh, reproductive uh, uh, physiology and pathology and uh, this week we are going to talk about uh, Infertility, as you know, our hospital is mainly for um, reproductive medicine. In other words, we will help people who cannot achieve um, babies normally. And we also do surgery from time to time to remove problems and also deliver babies. So our hospital is not mainly for only we treat infertility and that's the end of the story. We do the whole range of activities starting from helping couples to have babies and also helping uh, ladies who have got problems like for fibroids uh, painful periods uh, heavy periods all all the whole package and also at the end of the day we can help them to have babies in our hospital so this week we are going to be um, talking about uh, IVF and uh, IVF of course uh, starts when a patient comes to the clinic uh, the normal the couple they come to the clinic and they bring most of the time they are referred or they're being sent by friend or doctors and uh, you'll be seeing some clips where we we see couples being interviewed by our other doctors that we have in our hospital um, IVF um, is now about 32 years old since it was um, started and this picture uh, which was taken two years ago uh, when IVF was uh, started in 1979 and you can see here Professor Septo and Professor Edwards and this lady uh, uh, Louise Brown who delivered the first IVF, IVF baby uh, ever recorded in the world. Now um, Louise Brown she's now um, she's actually a nurse and now she has three children and uh, all the ch her children are normal children so there's no deformity as some people think that babies grown outside for two days they might become abnormal anything like that you know they are perfectly normal children and uh, when I started here five years ago actually six years ago we had our first IVF baby her name is Stella and uh, this is Professor Peter and this is our embryologist uh, and this baby Stella she's now six years and she's doing very very well at school in school she's a clever girl 
and uh, there's no abnormality on her everything is fine so forget about those people who tell you that oh babies born by IVF they're abnormal they don't have brain they don't have anything but I want to assure you that these are normal normal children and in fact some of our parents they think that their children born this way are more they're better than the one born naturally but I think this is just going a little bit too far but I think they're just all ordinary children they they tend to love them more of course than because they've ne some of this couple they've never had children so when when they have children through IVF for example procedure they tend to get a lot of attachment uh, to them so to give a lot of uh, attachment to them so uh, we when we opened up our clinic in September 2005, we were privileged by the, the, the president of Uganda, Yoweri Seven, who came and opened up our clinic. Uh, these are old pictures five years ago. And uh, when he came, well, we showed him around that we started our clinic actually in a bedroom. We converted the bedroom into um, um, a lab and uh, to the reception room in our flat into um, reception for patients and uh, so it was quite a joyous occasion when he came and uh, we have a few pictures here uh, we also appeared in the local newspaper about Gumba Bawonye we had this couple who came from Chigali and they had been married for about eight years and fortunately they were we did the first time and they had twins a boy and a girl and they called them victor and uh, victoria so um um some of you who don't understand how we how the reproduction works i just want to show you briefly that um, naturally a woman ovulates and the egg is picked up by the tube as you can see it here immediately after two days an embryo is formed and travels between five to ten days to reach to the middle of the uterus and gets attached to the border of the uterus here inside endometrial cavity and gets attached and start growing and uh, um, eventually pregnancy established and uh, pregnancy lasts between nine months to ten months and then one delivers and some of the causes of infertility here in developing countries you can see uh, 40 percent 40 percent of uh, causes are due to tubal factor when the tubes are inflamed or blocked this the egg will not be able to meet the seed of a man so one of the indications for IVF is a tubal factor when the tubes are blocked and uh, we see it here about 40 percent of our patients they have this problem the other problem is uh, sperm or male factor sperm factor when you find the sperms are low and they cannot be able to reach the the egg so 15 percent and uh, now we are going to go to show you how IVF is actually conducted a man produces sample as you see it here and we, we take that sample and we remove the ladies eggs through by going through the vagina here we pick up the eggs and uh, put the sperm the seed of a man into this tube and the eggs into this tube together and we put them into incubator incubator actually works acts like the tube because the fertilization takes place in the tube so this incubator we mix the two uh, the seed of a man and a woman and after two days we get the, what we call a micro baby or an embryo which is uh, placed back into the uterus using a catheter like this we put the embryos on the tip of this catheter and we introduce it we implant into the uterus uh, and the success rate for most good clinics is between 30 to f to 45 percent our center here we have about 35 percent on average and uh, if a woman became pregnant 
um, she proceeds to deliver. So this is how the IVF is very simple method, but it's complicated as far as we're concerned because there are a lot of things involved and it's, it's a bit expensive. And uh, may God bless you and we will continue again for the next week uh, about another subject that we are going to introduce next week. But uh, uh, causes of infertility, and uh, some of them can be treated, others can't be treated, and therefore the final result is to end up with the IVF. Hello, how are you? You're welcome to Women's Hospital. Thank you. Okay, this is Dr. Ruth Kabuma. Uh, you're meeting today. I want to know what is the major reason as to why you're here? Uh, we have been married for the last five years. Mm -hmm. We have been trying to have a baby. Okay. But all in all, we have failed. Mm -hmm. So as we have been watching our TVs, uh, there's a TV called LTV. Okay, okay. And some news on the radio and the papers. Mm -hmm. We heard about women's hospital in mm -hmm. Koto. Okay. Mm -hmm. That there's a doctor called Dr. Tamale Sali. Okay. Who assists people who had failed to conceive mm. naturally? Okay, okay. Being your first time, you will start here. You usually see the medical officers on ground, one of us. Then, uh, as we go on, we finish the workup. We will present you to Dr. Sally. Uh, currently, he's busy, he has quite a line. Yeah. So, being your first time here, I'll take you through the different tests. Then, you'll see him later for the way forward. Okay, how old are you, sir? And your wife, how old are you? 28. 28. Quite a young couple. Uh, do you have any children, sir? No. Do you have any children? I don't. Okay, you don't look happy. What's the problem? Be hopeful, I know. Be hopeful. Okay, you don't know. I'm going through a lot of difficulties. Mm. I'm even scared I may lose my marriage. Because mm. the relative of my husband, they're putting me on pressure. So mm. they think I'm the one having problems. So they go, go, go. We don't mm. want you. You are here for nothing, and yet I'm not the one who is causing this problem. Sure. I leave everything to God. I thank God He's still mm. loving me besides mm. we are having problems. Mm. That is why we came to you people. We need your help. Okay. Sorry, but I know God can be that good, okay? Yeah. Thank God your husband is still beside you. That is a very important asset. So thank God for it. Mm. Okay, you have children. When we do the tests, okay? It's very important to us women that upstairs you're psychologically not tortured, okay? Just try and uh, be a cool talk to your God. You'll have children after these tests, okay? No matter what the problem is, just be hopeful. Thank you that you're holding on to him, on to her. Continue to support her, continue. She needs your support, okay? Uh, have you tried any, in, any tests? Have you done any tests? Have you tried any medicines before coming to this place? Yeah, I've tried some. Gynecologist mm. around the town, oh, okay. the city. Okay. Mm. I've referred to many, but we've tried all in all. You still haven't got anything? Nothing. Okay, now I'll take you through the different tests that you have to do. Now, uh, one of them is, uh, I'll start with the ladies' tests. One of them is the scan. We'll do your scan. We usually, ours is a transvaginal scan. It's not just an abdominal scan. Then uh, we'll do your tests for hormones. We usually do this on day two of your periods, between day two to day five. The day you see your periods first is your day one. So you count that way, in day one, day two, three, four, and five. Whether you're bleeding or you're not bleeding, you continue counting in that order. Mm -hmm. So between day two to day five, we'll do your hormones. We take off blood from here and check for your hormones. The third test is called hysterosalpingogram. This is a test for tubes. Okay? Then for the gentleman, we do semen analysis. We require that you have had sexual abstinence for three days. That is no sexual contact for at least three days. We prefer three to five days. Okay? okay? Mm -hmm. um, so after we've done this test, we'll know what exactly the problem is and so which way to go or what to do next. Okay? Yeah. Um, just be hopeful. You'll have children. You know, God can be that good. Okay? 
if Sarah had children at 90 years old, you will have children. You're still a young couple. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Mm, let's do the tests and mm. we'll let you know as we go on what the tests have been. We will give you a medical report. This letter, uh, this report comes after all the tests. We we'll give you a medical report showing you what tests you have done, what our findings have been, and so what the way forward is. Yeah. Okay. Then you can see Dr. Sally from there as uh, what the way forward will be. Okay, be hopeful, you will have children. Okay, okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Women's Hospital International. This is our injection room. This is the place wherein we administer the injections to our patients. Okay. Today, we are going to talk about gonal F injections. These are our injections. Okay. This is the pen, this is the gonal F pen. This is the injection used to stimulate the eggs. This is going to make your eggs grow bigger. This is going to stimulate your ovaries. Okay. Now I'm going to demonstrate on how this pen is being used. This is not painful and this is administered very easily. Okay, I have here my patient whom I will prick. So this one, you open. This is our needle, very small one. We open that way. We put it there. We screw it, screw it tightly. Remove. Then remove. See, this is our needle here. Very, very tiny. This is going to be injected into the abdomen subcutaneously. Okay. Now I'm going to show you where it is going to be pricked. Madam, can you show me your abdomen? Okay. So we are going to prick anywhere below the navel. So anywhere below the umbilicus, this is the area. So this is the area. Here, 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 here. Okay, you can prick anywhere here. It is important that you do not prick just one area. You rotate the sides. First, we clean. Okay, I'm cleaning with an alcohol swab. Now it's clean. Now we are going to prick. So you set the dose. What dose do you want? Example. She's going to take 150 international units. So this is the arrow. I put it to 150 and then I pull it. That is now ready. The injection is now ready for administration. Now we do it like this. Sideways, then we prick. Uh, today we are going to demonstrate to you the process uh, of uh, IVF in vitro fertilization from A to Z. Uh, so we have a patient here. Uh, the first step is in IVF is to ovarian stimulation so that we can give dead eggs. Um, this patient is now being laid down on this couch. I just give it local anesthesia, so I put no block so that she doesn't get pain. She has also been sedated, so she's not um, well anxious. And uh, this process is just like going to see a dentist. He does local anesthesia on uh, on the you know oral cavity, and then he can operate on it without any you know, problem. So just done this one. And uh, now we are going to to start a collection. Everything is done through the vaginal canal, which is much easier to have uh, good access to the ovaries. And all this is done under ultrasound guided vision, guided ultrasound. 
you look at the scan as I'll show you in a minute. This is done. Um, many, when you are doing this, you must have so many assistants. I have uh, an ethicist. We have uh, Miss uh, Laker, she's a theater sister. Looking after the patients on the top, make sure she, the IV fluid um, is going well. and. Um, then we have uh, our chief nurse here, Sister Metron Caro. She's an IVF spe specialist nurse. She's going to assist me to give me the, anything that I need, the bottles that we see, and then we will. And then we have uh, nurse uh, Josephine who, who goes around to take the bottles into the lab to give them to the embryologist. The embryologist to look into the each uh, container of fluid that we've collected, and then he will, he will advise us whether eggs are there or not. The whole process may take between ten minutes to most of the time to half an hour. If the patient has got so many eggs, for the cause, it might even go up to forty-five minutes, but. Hardly goes to any more than that. The patient is anxious. Some patients are very anxious. We put those ones, we put them to sleep. So they don't feel anything. Or if patients have got abdominal ovaries, which is very difficult to... Um, now I'm going to show you the picture of the ultrasound here. You can see... Now the ovary has, was stimulated and you see those black rounded uh, shadows, those are the follicles and each follicle contains one egg. Each of one of these contains one egg. So I'm putting in my needle, there's a, you can see a line, that's, uh, and my needle should follow that line, so I'll go through, see? Now I'm sucking the fluid out of this follicle and you can see it collapsing and uh, that fluid is going into a container um, I'm pressing on the pump, you can hear the noise, that's a pump and um, so I'm going through the second one see and that is, I need to collect all the fluid in that um, follicular cyst and uh, then I keep on doing this until we we collect all of them and then we we start counting how many eggs have been obtained sometime not all follicles contain eggs but most of the time we do get them so I'm going through another one here It's just harvesting. It's like harvesting. You have um, fruits on the tree, and um, you know they are ripe, and then we you go and pick up. We make these um, follicles ripe by giving an injection called XCG, which triggers ovulation. And um, most of the time it is a very simple procedure. Yes. So the embryologist is telling me that we've obtained two, two eggs so far from, I think, three follicles that we've, we've uh, aspirated. We'll go on doing this until we uh, complete the process. Thank 
you. So, um, okay. 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 So, um, I keep on looking at the screen. I have to look at my needle, make sure that the needle is doesn't go to any other place apart from the follicle and I'm guided by the, that arrow you see it on the screen. Uh, my needle should be uh, parallel to that. Uh, can you? Stop. So the, my assistant here keep telling me whether the food is coming in the container. And uh, you, should, you can see the container. Uh, Container, you can see the fluid coming through the container. And um, sometimes clear, sometimes blood is stained. And uh, occasionally you get small bleeding through these follicles and then you, you blood comes out. But the embryology is to be able to, to find an egg through even if it's very bloody. So, we keep on doing this until uh, there's another follicle here, big one. So I keep going doing like harvesting. Harvesting. And then I go through another one like that. You have to be very careful because very in this picture you see there's a big vessel. Uh, you have to make sure you don't go through it. If you do, if you did, then of course, if what, there's not much problem can happen. But you don't want to, because you can get problems. Patient can bleed and then have complications. So you have to be very precise. That big one, there's one on the top, small one. Then I go to the next one, that big one. And then my assistant is telling me that the fluid is coming and I can also see it. Uh, so it's coming, I'm going to another one here. So you can see again. And uh, the patient is not jumping, so sedation that we've used is good, and she's comfortable. And uh, and the one is is not sleeping; she's awake. Uh, there's one patient and the next is they are all doing well. So we we'll keep on doing this one and uh, so I've so far spent about um, 10 minutes and um, as you can see on the screen there's a clock there and uh, I'll go we started at 9.27 in the morning. So I keep on doing this until going to another follicle. It's amazing this is how the Bible says that you no, know, you and me were created by by God in a wonderful and fearful fearful way. All of us came from a seed of a woman and seed of a man. Uh, this particular patient, she's got blocked tubes. These eggs cannot be able to be, can't be picked up because the tubes are blocked. So the only way we can help this patient is through removing our eggs and fertilize them outside with the husband's uh, seed. So the fertilization is taking place outside her body. 
Because in our body, the tube, the transport system is blocked. Just like when you are traveling from A to B and you find the road is blocked, you have to find another route and uh, bypass the blockage. This is exactly what we are doing. When IVF was first started in 1979 by Professor Stepto and uh, Edwards, Professor Edwards, um, they were not doing a vaginal aspiration because that time the ultrasound was not yet well developed. They were doing laparoscopic retrieval of the of the eggs. And that was more it used to take a lot of time and uh, one patient told us to take about two hours. So we're almost finished here. Um, the my embryologist is, is telling me we've got um, about 10 eggs. We're expecting a little bit more. We are, we've got now, he's telling me that we've got 13 eggs so far. I'm just going to finish quickly here because this, uh, all the follicles have been separated. This is a big blood vessel, so if you have to be careful so your needle doesn't go through it. And occasionally, patients may ovulate in the patch of Douglas. So there's fluid in the patch of Douglas there, for example, putting my needle there. It's coming. So actually, I'm aspirating from the patch of Douglas. The f uh, occasion the patient do ovulate prematurely. And you have to get this uh, fluid from the patch of Douglas. Douglas uh, was a gynecologist, was an American, I think born into 18, 1876. Somewhere there. I think I finished it. Thank you very much. This is the part one of egg collection. So finished egg collection and you can see everything. This is the needle that I've been using. I'm just going to flush it, make sure some eggs may be trapped in the along this tubing system. And uh, this is the vaginal probe that we've been using. This is the um, needle, this is a needle guide, so that your needle, when it's fixed here, doesn't move. It is fixed. This one, this, this is very, uh, this needle guide is uh, quite expensive, it's about $50 this piece. And we all are disposable, so we're going to throw it away. And. Uh, then this is the condom. This is the longest condom. It's used for covering the the ultrasound vaginal probe so that and you can see it's not contaminated, it's clean and protects the patient and the doctor and the, all of us here. So and sterile. This probe alone is about $20,000. If you break it, I'll lose $20,000. That's why I think procedures are quite expensive. So. We are now cleaning. And the patient, as you can see, she's, she's awake. We finished, it's taken us, we started uh, 9.27. And it's now, now 9.40, 9.40, when we finish. Minutes. Took us 15 cleaning, minutes. Cleaning, cleaning your back Took us 15 back. minutes. I'm just cleaning the vagina, make sure there's no blood, she's not bleeding. I can show you my, yeah, it's clean. 
little bit of blood, but it is clean. Thank you. So after this, the sample has been collected from from the recovery um, room, uh, it's brought through here. Uh, in most modern um, modern uh, labs, there's always sorry, sorry, sorry. there's always a window through which we do. Um, but as you can see, it's brought here that we have a work in a very small area, so that's quite satisfactory. So the two our two embryologists are looking at um, the aspiration of the ovarian uh, follicular fluid, look for eggs, and they already they have already prepared the semen sample, and uh, they will decide which method they are going to use, either by using uh, normal IVF, where they mix the sperms and the eggs together, intubate them for at least 24 hours, or they can inject the sperms into the eggs if um, the patient suffering from um, oligospermia, low sperm count, and so on. So this patient we've done, she will know tomorrow whether her eggs have been fertilized, and if they have done, so we can replace them on day two. From today is day zero. Uh, tomorrow fertilization day one. And the third day from today we call it day two is actually when we can do transfer, or we can continue day three, transfer day three, day four, day five. Day five is the Brussels stage where embryos are actually they are hatching out. And um, this is the first stage in the process of IVF. So the patient going through, patient going through this treatment, there are so many, there are so many uh, hurdles. Thank you. 